In video two, we'll explore the next step needed in creating our application. We will make the program print to us the ASCII decimal value of the key being pressed. Please visit the website www.lookuptables.com for an example of an ASCII table. Here, I've opened up my Firefox browser and now I'm at lookuptables.com. I'm going to scroll my mouse down here. I want you to take a look at this. We have a column here that says decimal and a column here that says char. Now this is the ASCII decimal value and in this char column this is what the character equivalent is. Like for example if I take my mouse over here to decimal 65 and ASCII decimal 65 is equal to the character A. We're going to refer back to this chart in a moment. I'm just going to minimize it for now. We must declare a character data type in order to hold our data. On line 10, char I that's it. We're going to call character I. Following this, we need to write an infinite loop that will constantly scan the keyboard for a pressed key until the program is killed by the user. I'm going to give us a couple spaces on line 12, while 1. The reason this loop will execute an infinite number of times is because we're telling the program, while 1 is 1, execute this block. 1 will always be 1, so therefore the loop will never meet an end condition. Inside of this, we're going to create a for loop that will scan ASCII decimals 8 through 190. These are the ASCII values that we are looking for in particular. Line 14, 4, I equals 8, and I is this character value that we have right here, while I is less than or equal to 190, I++. plus plus. And don't forget to put the block. While the for loop scans, we must add something that will temporarily stop the scan from executing when a key is pressed so that we can log it to a text file. So we'll scan the keyboard for interrupt value negative 32,767. This will let us know that a key has been pressed, and then we will send the ASCII decimal value of that key to the save function for interpretation. Here we go, lines 16 and 17. If get async key state send it parameter i is equal to negative 32,767, go to the save function, send it the parameter i, which is the character, which is going to be an integer at this point, and we're also going to send it the parameter log.txt. Get async key state is a built-in function that checks to see if the state of a key on the keyboard is pressed or not. When the value is negative 32,767, that tells our program that the operating system is about to process a key pressed from the keyboard. Once our program intercepts this transmission, it will listen in on the communication between Windows and the the keyboard. Once Windows understands what key has been pressed, its ASCII decimal value will be intercepted by our program and sent off to the save function. So actually Windows is doing all of the hard work. Our program takes what Windows processes it and uses it for its own purpose. We're also passing these two parameters along with the log.txt to the save function. The string log.txt is the name of the output file that will hold all of the keystroke data. Inside of the save function, we will now check to see if everything is passing through OK. We'll add a simple cout statement to verify if the correct data is getting through. So I'm going to scroll down into the save function, make it on line 27. I'm going to type cout keystroke, key underscore stroke, and also do an end line at the end of this. Now I'm going to compile and run the program. I'm going to push F9. And here it is. So when I push a key on the keyboard, it, the data should be sent into here. So I'm going to push the A. Okay, I just pushed the A key on the keyboard, and you see how we got 65. Pull up that ASCII chart again. What was 65? A. So we can see how that corresponds. Now I'm going to type in the word Wibbit. W-I-B-I-T. All right, I got 87. See where 87 is. 87, W, 73, I, Okay, great, so it seems like everything is mapping properly. Now that we know how to get the keystrokes, let's learn how to save them to a text file. Once this code is working perfectly, continue on to the next video, where we will save the raw input to an output file.